I had to endure. Look at this, for God's A man who has knocked Edward Heath from his poop as Britain's best-known yachtsman, Simon Le Bon. I would say, I would, I would say on the whole, they're quite pleased to see you back, aren't they? Yeah, I'm not half as pleased as I am to see them back. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm always pleased when they turn up at all. <laughs> so you're home and dry, and I, I thought you looked a bit weather-beaten. Well, yeah, we had a bit of a blow just as we came in, just up the Solent. It was blowing about 30 knots, still 30, 40 knots, and it's big, big uh, wind for those big sails. Yeah. And just as we crossed the line, we pulled down the, the jib top, which was up, and it was uh, a shocking, a shocking wave got me right there, cold, cold you know, English water. Do you know, it's an extraordinary thing, and I'm not interrupting your flow, but it's the only time doing this show I've ever heard people, I can hear people out in the street screaming. So there must, there must be some kind of sixth sense that you're on. <laughs> anyway, no, no sooner did you come through the solvent <coughs> and having been nearly capsized off Uruguay and all the rest of it, that you were pummeled by the customs, which oh, seemed a little strange. No, not really. I mean, I'm, I think it's a, it's a bit sort of the diamond dead ringer for it. Pop star comes back from South America. I mean, yeah, but it's the, it's the whip bread, isn't it, really? I yeah. mean, you had thrown <laughs> all the booze overboard almost we as soon as you... <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you hadn't really. You'd been no, given a lot didn't. of whiskey and you threw it overboard. Yeah, we had to lighten the boat up, so we had to get rid of a lot of these uh, three yeah. 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 Didn't throw any crew members overboard, right? No, we nearly did, um, but, uh, but um, I behaved myself for that day, so I didn't go. Yeah. So an enormously exciting experience for you. <clears throat> Everything you thought it would be, or do you feel a, slightly se a, a slight sense of anticlimax now? Oh, now a very big anticlimax because it's the kind of thing which is just going to fold up very quickly. You know, after working for seven months in the drum team, you know, each of us doing our different thing. I mean, I've been involved very much with the publicity side of getting people interested in the boat and in the Whitbread race. Yeah. Um, and, and sailing that boat for those two legs, putting every ounce of energy that, that I really could into that boat. I know that now we've actually arrived back in port. It'll be a week. It'll be old news, and we'll just be looking at something to How do. How are you going to top it? You see, what what are you doing next? <coughs> oh, I don't know. Make a don't be, make a decent Duran album. Yeah. Good one of those. Yeah. Yes, I think the audience agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> you joined you joined the boat halfway halfway round, as it were. Did you find it difficult to integrate with the rest of the crew, who had already been together for some weeks? Well, no, not really, because I've I've been part of, as I said, part of the drum team yeah. for. Well, it's nearly two years now, and that's been putting the boat together. We did the races in the, um, the Maxi Series in the Solent uh, last summer, and, of course, we have the Upside Down the Club as well. Yeah. 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 Um, you didn't feel... Did that add to your apprehension, the, that almost fatal accident in the Fastener? Uh, I, it gave me some, some hard nights when I first got on the boat, yes, um, when we were slamming into waves, and I, and I suddenly had, had this feeling that it was going to happen again. But then I had the whole... The, support of the crew and people who'd actually been on the two legs before me saying come on Simon just get into it with us you know yeah. you pull, pull that rope like I'm gonna pull this one and um, don't think about the keel falling off or the mast coming down or the boat turning upside down and we'll get there and we'll get there fast if we concentrate on making the boat go fast but it must have been the discomfort must have been tremendous <coughs> first of all you haven't got much space but you must have been wet most of the time yeah that was um, that's a big problem it's the wet also well, I'll, st I'll start with a wet bit. This is really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, do you go to bed wet, in, in wet um, thermal underwear, because it's the only way to dry it. So you wake up damp, and, um, of course, you're woken up after four hours. It's four hours on, watch four hours off. And four hours just isn't enough time to have a comfortable sleep in any situation. Even if you could sleep in those conditions. <clears throat> can yeah. you sleep with the boat going all over the place and oh, the I wind? assure you, some, sometimes I'd come off watch and I'd be almost asleep before I got into my bunk. It was, yeah. Yeah. It's the energy that you use, not only sailing the boat, but actually preserving your life. I think that probably about 60% of the energy that you have is used in holding on and watching out for the ropes and the sheets and the things that can take you off overboard and looking after other people as well. I had my life saved by two guys in the boat, Neil, Cheston and Yana. 
I was um, helping pulling a spinnaker and I got the wrong side of the sheet, the spinnaker went out and it pulled me, pulled my legs like there, right over the lifelines. One of them held on to me, the other one pushed the rope out of the way. And, um, and it's that kind of, that's the amazing thing about it actually, realizing that you actually have the lives of other people in your hands and you really have a responsibility towards them and you must use your energy to look after them as well as race that boat. So how is it, would you say, it's ch it must have changed you as a person? If you can, if you can even at this remove, yeah. look back. If, if it has changed me, it's, um, it's given me a yardstick. It's given me something very simple and very demanding um, but something quite identifiable in my life that I can measure other experiences against. Is pop music not <coughs> going to seem very small beer after this? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, we're, I'm desperate to get back in Duran and, and start writing again. I've had lots of tunes going on in my head while I've been at sea. And the, we've been talking with the guys sort of regularly. I've been on the radio phone to them. Contrary, uh, actually, to a, a one of the uh, reports in the newspaper, which said that Andy was poised to quit. This is John Blake getting his facts wrong yet again. Yeah. Um, well, there were a lot of all sorts of... All sorts of bizarre reports, in including your marriage, including, <coughs> you know, yeah. you, I don't know how you could possibly carry on and drum with somebody else, but particularly with the boat all over the place. But you, you nearly capsized. Uh, well, I quite fancy the cook, you know. Oh, did you? Yeah. Of his, yeah. Well, I suppose after a while, anybody looked good on the boat, didn't they? What was, <laughs> what was, your, most, what was your most memorable moment? What, 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 do you, what will stay with <coughs> you? The most memorable. Moment. I mean, there were some scary moments. There was a moment when we went over and, and the boat stayed on its side in a brooch for about five minutes and we were running about. That wasn't the most memorable moment. There was the line crossing, the secret and appalling rites that they give to initiates of the, of the equator. The first time you cross the line, you go through this appalling ceremony with, um, with King Neptune and Pirate, his helper. And it's, it's secret, only sailors know about it. That yeah. was shocking involving drinking of a bottle of Bollinger no, champagne really and tough, yeah. that sort of yes. thing. <laughs> a rough old life at sea. Terrible, but that wasn't the most memorable moment. Um, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting my money's worth, aren't I? You've got to admit. Um, I think the most memorable moment was actually coming around back to home, seeing England for the first time and just knowing that every minute we were getting closer and <laughs> Am I saying the right thing? Yeah, Terry. Right, you are. <laughs> Keep talking, they love it. And, and, and just getting closer, and we let off flares, and it was, we saw people on the boats who came out to meet us, and then um, actually came aboard, and then the customs guys got on. We stayed on board for a bit longer, and then I got off and I saw my wife for the first time in a month, and that was just a very, very big moment for me. Yeah, well, I can tell special. you, not, a, not only was she hungry for your love, but she's eaten all the food in hospitality as well. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're back, her appetite has returned. <laughs> and we're delighted to have you back. Simon Lebon. Thanks very much. <laughs> okay. Rod Stewart will be with us in a moment. So lock up your daughters. Now last year when this show was mewling and puking in its nurse's arms, a plucky little lad who had won a ginormous talent contest in the States came over and sang for us. And he's just had another huge hit in the land of the free with his latest, I Do It All Again, it's Sam Harris. <laughs> Sam Harris and I do it all again. Now my next guest would love to have opened the batting for Yorkshire have been a scheming in